Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings, and we're on to the last book of the last Herald Mage trilogy. So here we are. We're now at the part of the story that everybody was expecting when they first started reading this, assuming that they had the sense to read this book um, after the Arrows trilogy. If, of course, you are reading these in the order in which I am presenting them on this uh, series of videos, then, well, um, okay, sorry for spoiling it, but um, like I always say, this is an all-spoilers zone. Um, especially since this book came out in 1991, so it's been a very, very long time, and uh, yeah. So... Um, I, I want to also express one tiny bit of confusion about something, and that is, why does Vanielle keep on having black hair in all of these? Vanielle's hair, by the end of the third book, is white. And yet somehow, on the cover of this, and on the covers of the, well, two out of the three books in the series, Vanielle has black hair. Look at that, black hair. Why does he have black hair? Vaniel doesn't have black hair. By that point, his hair is white because using node power bleaches your hair. It's one of those things that comes up in the course of the series. It's actually magic power tends to causes bleaching in the Valdemar universe. That's why companions are white is because they are made out of magic, sort of. And so they're just like unable to stop being bleached. Okay, so here we are, Magic's Price. Um, now, this was actually heavily foreshadowed in the first book in an exceedingly heavy-handed, yeah, we know this is coming because we've read Arrows of the Queen way, and that is that dream that Vaniel had of facing off with Lyreth, uh, the evil sorcerer, that dream that he had... Um, a dream where he's standing there with Telendal at his side. That dream comes to fruition at the end of this book. Um, so this is the one where he meets his second life bond, um, you know, soulmate. And that's Stefan, Bard Stefan. And Stefan is incredibly talented. He's got a beautiful singing voice. He's got un, uh, just mountains of pure undiluted creativity for writing songs. He's talented at playing instruments. And he is introduced to Vanielle, first of all, through a unexpected magic talent. Now, if you'll recall, magic in or rather, I will tell you if you haven't read this series, magic in Valdemar is split into two kinds. There is proper magic, magecraft, and then there is gifts with a capital G. And gifts are gifts are the non mag they're the kind of magic that crops up in science fiction. Gifts are mind speaking, aka telepathy, empathy, which I mean is telepathy. Uh, fetching, which is a sort of a telekinesis slash teleportation, depending on how you use it. Um, the uh, fire gift, which I don't recall offhand what they call it, but it's basically um, pyrokinesis. Uh, in another book, uh, the book about Laven Firestorm, actually, it goes into some detail about how the fire gift works, and since it apparently works by agitating molecules until things set on fire, it's very much pyromancy. Um, and, you know, foresight, which is uh, the psychic ability to see the future, which, of course, leans more towards pure undiluted magic than the other kinds of powers. But the point is that being gifted, whether a healing gift or what have you, is not Magecraft magic, it's a separate kind of power that exists and functions differently from magic. Um, the Bardic Gift, which is kind of like a variant on telepathy, it's kind of like a projective... It's kind of like a projective empathy carried by the voice, in effect. 
that um, a bard can speak or sing a person into feeling what they want them to feel. It's the way, and that's sort of the strength of a bard. Um, anyways, so it turns out that Stefan has a gift, a very minor gift, but it's a gift that allows him to effectively muffle pain, to act as sort of a walking, singing anesthetic. And um, so he uses, he gets introduced to Vanielle because the king is dying, and he's dying of some kind of slow, exceedingly painful, cancerous consumption. No one knows what it is. Um, I'm not even... Actually, knowing Mercedes Lackey, she probably came up with a specific illness and and chose that specific illness for its specific effects and did proper research. But the idea is that nobody in Valdemar has seen an illness like this, doesn't know what it is, doesn't know how it works, and can't figure out how to stop it. And Randall is... King Randall is dying. Um... But it's exceedingly painful, and so Stefan's ability to basically cause someone to stop feeling pain for some period of time to make pain go away um, is a tremendous boon because it will allow the king to do things like do his job as king and hear people, uh, people's petitions and make decisions and not just lie there on a bed curling up and wishing for death. Um, and so that's how Stefan gets introduced to Vanielle, is Vanielle's nephew, Medrin, says, I have this friend and he has this amazing trick. You can take him to the king. So they do that and it works and it's incredible. And Stefan is able to do this, Stefan goes along with this because at this stage in the game, at this stage in the game, he is not selfless and he doesn't understand the true selfless instinct. I mean, like, you know, umpty squilly and other people, he understands right and wrong and all that, but there's always that line between you know, there's the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do and the heraldic I must help other people whether or not I know them because this is who I am and there isn't a choice. That thing that makes people heroes is that moment when the hero steps forward and says, I have a choice, I can save this bunch of people I don't know and have no reason to care about, or I can save myself, and the hero says, well, that's not a choice, I have to do the other thing. Whereas anyone else would say, no, that's totally a choice. That's the difference between heroes and ordinary people like me who would say, heh, never mind, let them die. Um, that's because I'm a bad person. Um, so, <laughs> um, so the thing is that, that Stefan does this because he's thinking in the exceedingly practical terms that if he helps the king in this way, he's come to the attention of the king. He's come to the attention of the rich, of the powerful, and he's a bard. He wants, he wants a stable position where he can write his music, where he can play his songs. He doesn't, because Stefan was a street kid. He was plucked up off the street and for the first you know, 10 years of his life, 8 years of his life, however long it was, he didn't know anything but being on the streets and being a beggar. And so being plucked up and taken to join the Bardic Collegium is, you know, at first baffling and terrifying, but it is in a lot of ways a dream come true. It's three square meals a day, it's education, it's a, you know, a path to having an actual living that doesn't require him to either prostitute himself or, you know, beg on the streets or freeze or whatever. And so what he's thinking is he wants to have a wealthy, cushy position. He wants to have some place where he is the much petted and much made of bard of some powerful lord who will pay him lots of money and give him lots of perks and give him a free place to stay and he'll never have to travel everywhere in 
desperate search of, you know, something to tide him over. And that's why Stefan does this. But he meets Vanielle, and the two of them fall in love because, you know, it's obviously not just because Stefan is gay, even though Stefan is totally gay, um, but because they do fit together. Um, and um, there's another reason that they fit together, but I think I'm... No, why not? Uh, reincarnation is totally a thing in the Valdemar universe. Uh, when a herald dies, they get the choice of going on to heaven for however long, the havens as they call it, which is totally heaven, or they can be reincarnated. They can be reincarnated as an ordinary person, as a herald, as a bard, as a healer. They can be reincarnated as companions, and indeed a lot of companions are in fact reincarnated um, former heralds. Um, and it's supposed to be a secret, um, mostly because for the same reason that Trills on Star Trek Deep Space Nine are not supposed to get into relationships with people they were in relationships in their last life, because you're moving on and you're not supposed to cling to a previous life, the new Trill, the newly joined Trill is a new person and should not allow themselves to be subsumed in a previous life. In this case, it's also because the last thing you need to do is have somebody's life bond from a previous from a previous life or a lover or whomever, you know, flailing around saying, "Oh my god, it's you. You're a horse now, but I still love you. We need to stay together." And the horse and the newly created companion is like, "No, I I'm, I'm a companion now. I have a job and we're not together anymore." So, companions are the only ones who are aware of this. Everyone else isn't. And so, Stefan isn't aware that in his past life he was Tillandal. And it's one of those things that Vanielle doesn't know until he's, like, dying or about to die. And it's something that a few people figure out along the way, but they decide not to tell Vanielle and Stefan for the precise reasons I brought up, because Vanielle will either treat Stefan like Tillandal, or he'll take Stefan's word as being having more weight than it should, because at that point in his life, Vanielle was letting Tillandal be the one to take the lead at all times, because Tillandal was older than Vanielle and more mentally put together in a lot of ways and a whole bunch of other things. And, you know, so he might start doing that, which wouldn't be good because Stefan is, although reincarnated, his own person. And, you know, Vanielle might also start completely ignoring him because he'd be like, oh, well, Tillandal was just, you know, this when he died, and so I wouldn't listen to him. And they just, they decide, let it go, let them be who they are right now and have the relationship that they're having instead of throwing this thing in and gumming up the works. Um, and so they have their relationship and it's wonderful and it's darling. And then Lirath starts assassinating the last of the Herald Mages. And there's a reason this is the last Herald Mage. And it's because... Vanielle is the last one, and he winds up being the last one for centuries. Vanielle winds up casting spells that make it possible for Valdemar to survive without having any mages. And I believe it's after he dies that the companions cast one more spell that makes it so that Valdemar forgets that... Her that mages were ever a thing. Forget that they even existed, that they think that magic has died out. It's a very, very weird spell, and I will bring it up again later because it comes up again and again in some very odd places in the course of this, uh, in the course of the whole series. But at the end of this, Vanielle winds up having to call down Final Strike with his companion Efandes, and Final Strike is a suicide run, it's exactly what it sounds like, a final ball of lightning or fire 
that takes out you and your enemy at the same time, and that's what he does, and saves everybody, and um, that's basically everything. So I will see you all next week.